interesting facts about famous people. What were the worst westerns of the 1970s? We have our favorite westerns from the 70s. However, for every great movie, there is at least one that fell short. All subjective, of course. This video is on ten of these. Not my personal choice, rather based on ratings. Let me know what you think. Maybe you'll add or remove some. If you like this video, hit that notification button and get my new videos as they come up. Take a look at my channel to see all my videos. The link is in the description. Now let's have some fun and celebrate the genre. Nineteen seventy, Dirty Dingus McGee, director Bert Kennedy. Frank Sinatra is a character you probably wouldn't have expected to make a host of Western films. In Dirty Dingus McGee, Sinatra plays the lead role of McGee, stirring up trouble and heroism alongside his sometimes rival, sometimes friend, Hoke Birdsill, played by George Kennedy. The film has some dirty jokes for 1970. Critics find the movie to be a poor attempt at a comedy, rather than a genuinely humorous film. Nineteen seventy-one, Catlow, director Sam Wanamaker, Leonard Nimoy of Star Trek fame, as a bounty hunter tracking an outlaw named Catlow, and the two million dollars in gold he's stolen as he makes his way through Apache territory to the Mexico border. While the acting, especially Nimoy's, is great, the storyline is simply too weak to make this film worth watching. Nineteen seventy two, Pocket Money, director Stuart Rosenberg, Paul Newman, who'd had wild success in Cool Hand Luke a few years prior, attempted to replicate his performance in Pocket Money, broke and in debt. With that STD inflicted horse he can't get out of quarantine, Newman's character, Jim Kane, teams up with his old pal Leonard, played by Lee Marvin, to purchase some cattle and change his fortune, accidentally getting himself wrapped up in some shady business. Reviewers complained that the movie seemed confused, lacking a clear point or direction, and coast on its star power rather than trying to innovate. Nineteen seventy three The Deadly Trackers Directors Barry Shear, Samuel Fuller. A violent western, The Deadly Trackers, was disliked by almost everyone connected to the project. A story about a Texas sheriff named Kilpatrick, who seeks revenge after an outlaw, played by Rod Taylor, who killed his wife and son. Kilpatrick teams up with a Mexican policeman, who's also after the outlaw. The two must overcome their desire for justice and revenge, in order to get the job done. Facing tons of onset drama, the production was even shut down for a time. The behind-the-scenes mess is apparent on screen. When it finally hit theatres, the Los Angeles Times dubbed it the worst film released this year. 1974, Blood Money. Director, Antonio Margaretti. Blood Money, more commonly called The Stranger and the Gunfighter, stars Lo Lee as a martial artist who joins forces with classic western gunslinger Lee Van Cleef. Together they follow a treasure map left behind by Lee's character's uncle, which should lead them to ancient buried treasure. A true spaghetti western. The film has its funny moments, but overall is a mediocre and forgettable mix of the two genres. The most brutal hands in the east join with the fastest gun of the west in an unusual search for a fortune in gold. 1975, Take a Hard Ride, director Antonio Margaretti. A review of Take a Hard Ride attests that the film goes on and on, lurching in little fits and starts of inspiration from dimly remembered earlier movies. A black western about an honest cowboy 
played by Jim Brown and his companions, a gambler and an Indian, who take $86,000 across miles of dangerous land to their former employer's widow in Mexico. The movie is pretty standard, but ultimately it lacks the seamlessness and story depth to make it worth watching. We've already buried a dozen men have said the same thing. With justice on his side and murder on his mind. Got no friends. An army of enemies. And only one thing to do. Nineteen seventy six. The Duchess and the Dirtwater Fox. Director Melvin Frank. A card shark, George Siegel, and a hustler, Goldie Horn, walk into a bar, steal forty thousand dollars from a bunch of outlaws, then fall in love. Goldie Horn is the high point of this romp. She was nominated for a Golden Globe, losing to Faye Dunaway. Aside from her performance, the Western comedy has some funny moments. The humour is as good as any other comedy released that year. Nevertheless, viewers were unsatisfied with its ending, which just sort of peters out without providing any resolution. Nineteen seventy seven, Kid Vengeance, director Joseph Manjuk. Vengeance was only awarded a theatrical release thanks to its teen star, one of the biggest of the nineteen seventies, Leif Garrett. Garrett plays teenager Tom, who sees both his parents killed by a band of Mexican outlaws. In typical Vengeance adventure form, Garrett sets out for revenge, getting help along the way from a prospector, Jim Brown, robbed by the same outlaws. Critics were turned off by the gruesomeness of the subject matter, as well as a tired plot that doesn't attempt to do anything new. In one hour. One hour. One hour. That's a handsome one. 1978, Buffalo Rider. Directors, John Fabian, George Loris, Loosely based on real life, Buffalo Rider tells a heartwarming story about Jake Jones, who finds and rescues a buffalo that's about to be eaten by a pack of coyotes. Jones names the buffalo and saddle breaks him, then proceeds to ride him around the west, doing all sorts of heroic acts. There's not really a plot to this film. There are confusing and seemingly unrelated animal and nature shots mixed in among the half-hearted attempts at a storyline. They're dead. Nineteen seventy nine, The Villain. Director Hal Needham. Kirk Douglas and Arnold Schwarzenegger play opposite each other in this offbeat western about a convicted felon agreeing to steal me, money for a crooked a banker in order yes. to avoid a hanging. I'm handsome stranger. Consistently compared so, to a Looney Tunes episode, essentially a real life version of the classic B -b -b TV show. Boy, a family film. The villain Don't was never an awards contender and has developed a cult following over the years. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. I appreciate your likes and subscribers. Hit the notification button to get my new videos. Take a look at my channel and check out my Facebook page. The links are in the description. I am Wrangler. Bye for now. See you again soon. Interesting facts about famous people.